In your science notebook, turn to the table of contents. Write seasons and eclipses, page 91 through 94. Then you're going to turn to page 91. You will glue this page down first. Make sure that you write page 91 on it. Glue this page down second. Make sure that you write page 92 on it. And glue this page down third. Make sure you write page 93 on it. And finally glue this page down and write 94 on it. For the first part of the video, you're going to be filling in this chart. Uh, the directions up here is what I did. I tilted uh, different earths to a 23, 23 degree angle and put them at different positions around the sun. And you're going to describe the light on the globe at the positions. Um, down here at the bottom where it says use this model, we are not using this model. My positions are different from this model, so we are not using that model. My, just go with the model that you see in the video. And I will tell you this is position A, B, C in the video, and you will write down the description of the light that you see, and then you'll take a guess at what season it is in that hemisphere. So here we have a setup of eight globes around the sun because we're gonna take a look at the position of these globes um, in different places in the Earth's orbital path around the sun. And as we do this, you're going to write the light that you observe hitting the northern hemisphere at each of the positions. So this is the first position, is position A. Northern hemisphere is where we live. Wow. Describe the light that you see. Remember the light's coming from the sun. Describe the light that you see hitting the northern hemisphere. Um, also take a guess as to what season you think that is on your notebook page. That's position A. All right, now we're gonna move to position B. Here is position B. Write the light that you notice hitting the northern hemisphere. Southern hemisphere is down here. Northern hemisphere is up here. Write the light, the description of the light that you see hitting the northern hemisphere and what position you think, uh, what season you think it is in the northern hemisphere. Moving on to position C. Here is position C. Write the light that you notice hitting the northern hemisphere at position C and what season you think that is. Now we're going to move to position D. Here is position D. Write the light that you see hitting the northern hemisphere and what season you think that is. This is position E. Write the description of the light that you see hitting the northern hemisphere at position E and what season you think that is. Here is position F. Write the light that you see hitting the northern hemisphere and what season it is. All right, here is position G. Write the light that you notice hitting the northern hemisphere on position G and what season it is. And then finally we have position H. Write the light that you notice hitting the northern hemisphere on position H. Now, you should have noticed at position A, the northern hemisphere was receiving light, but it was receiving indirect light. The brightest part is down here, okay? The brightest, sorry, I moved it. The brightest part is in the southern hemisphere. Yes, they're receiving light, but it's indirect light. And of course, the brightest part is actually the equator. The equator is in the center of the Earth, and it's an imaginary line and it always receives the most direct sunlight. So position A should have been winter in the northern hemisphere because it's receiving indirect sunlight. Then if we look at position E receiving direct sunlight, you can see how bright the northern hemisphere is now. And so that is in the summertime. So if position A winter, E summer, what does that make the ones in between? Well, that makes them spring and fall. We're going to look at C first. 
So position C and spring. After winter, you have spring, where the light is kind of going over the, the northern and southern hemispheres. Um, it's hitting both the northern and the southern hemisphere with the same intensity on C. So those are spring. And then when we move to G, and we've just ended summer, and you can see the same intensity in the northern and southern hemisphere of the light fall right before we go to winter. Make sure you have your notebook page filled out. This page, page 91 in your notebook, should be filled in. In the video um, that you just watched, it talked about position A, position D, E, and G. It showed all of the positions, but when I went over the correct answers, I only gave the answers to the seasons for position A, C, E, and G. There should be two winters, two springs, two summers, and two falls. So the other one that should have been winter besides A was H, because both of those had the majority of the sun on the southern hemisphere and only indirect light on the northern hemisphere. B and C were both spring, D and E were both summer, and F and G were both fall. And those are the seasons that we have in order, winter, spring, summer, fall. Now, if you look on page 92, remember Miss Bridges' uh, diagram or setup was a little bit different than this one. But if we look on page 92, to answer these questions correctly, we need to change them, basically. So this one should say at position H. This one should say at position H. Number three should be position E, and four should be position E. And then five should be position C and G. So at position H, how is the amount of light different in the two hemispheres? You need to go back and look at position H at what you wrote down. If you want to go look at the video again, you can. But position H was winter. So your description of the light and how the, or how the light was different the light should have been direct in the northern in the southern hemisphere and indirect light in the in the northern hemisphere the northern hemisphere hemisphere was getting indirect sunlight while the southern hemisphere was getting direct light. Position H shows Earth in the month of December. What season would it be in December in the southern hemisphere? Now remember, when we did our seasons over here, we did the northern hemisphere. So yes, in well, at position H, it's December. In the northern hemisphere, it's winter. But this question's asking me about the southern hemisphere. And in the southern hemisphere, it would be summer. We just said up here that they were getting, the southern hemisphere was getting the direct sunlight. And so they are getting they are having summer. Now that doesn't mean like, I know we live in South, uh, it's like South Mississippi. That's not what it means by Southern Hemisphere. Southern Hemisphere means below the equator. Northern Hemisphere doesn't mean in North Mississippi, it means north of the, of the equator. And the entire United States is in the Northern Hemisphere. At position E, how is the amount of light different in the two hemispheres? You can go back and look at the video or you can go back to the previous page and see what you wrote. Position E was the summer, which means the light in the northern hemisphere was direct and in the southern hemisphere it was 
indirect. The next question, what month is Earth in position E? How do you know? Well, position E, remember that's summer. So what month is it in summer? Don't just think about the months that you're off of school, but like right in the middle dead of summer, that would most likely mean July. It is July. I know because July is a summer month and a time in which the Northern Hemisphere receives the most light. If you think about it, a couple of months ago, it was dark at five o'clock in the afternoon. And now it's still light at five o'clock in the afternoon. Well, when you get to July, it's going to be light out at eight o'clock at night. It will, the sun will still be out. And that's because of our position. Our position in our path around the sun is changing and we are receiving more direct sunlight. So we have uh, longer days or longer amounts of sunlight. The amount of hours in a day doesn't change, just the amount, the number of hours of daylight we have changes. Position C and G have Earth receiving equal amounts of sunlight in the northern and southern hemispheres. What seasons occur at these points? So position C and G, look back at your graph here. C was spring and G was fall. C was spring and G was fall. Now it says why? Because C is after winter and G is actually before winter is before winter and both hemispheres are receiving equal light. And if you think about it, after summer, we start to cool off. It starts to get cool before it gets cold. And then it starts to warm back up. That's what we're in now, spring. It starts to warm back up before it gets really hot. You couldn't put fall here. It wouldn't make sense. You don't, you don't get really cold and then a little cold and then hot. No. You're cold, you warm up, you get really hot, you cool off, and then you get cold again. Um, final question, what two things cause seasons? So it's the tilt, tilt of Earth on its axis and the revolution of Earth around the sun. And that is what you saw in the first part of this video. You saw how all the globes, they were all tilted in the same direction, but the amount of sunlight received at the different positions around the sun is, is different. So we are now going to look at eclipses. The next part of this video is going to show you uh, the difference between a solar and a lunar eclipse. And you are going to answer the questions on page 93 and 94. I am going to go over the answers in the video. If you don't get the answers to the questions on 93 and 94 by watching the next part of this lab, you can look up the answers. So previously we did um, a lab where the moon, represented by this ball, revolves around the Earth, represented by my head. Okay. So now we're going to look at eclipses. The moon is still this ball, the earth is still my head, and the sun, of course, is still our light. So when the moon revolves and blocks out all of the sun's light, that's an eclipse. What kind of eclipse do you think that is? It's a solar eclipse. So in a solar eclipse, 
you have the sun, the moon, and the earth. That's the order, and you're going to draw that in your notebooks. Also, if you look at my face, you should see a shadow that the moon cast on my face. So it's blocking all the sun's light, and there's a small shadow or a small circle on my face. And this should show you how the solar eclipses can't be seen from everywhere on Earth all at the same time. Uh, we had a solar eclipse a few years ago, and there was like a total solar eclipse in some places where it got completely dark. And then in other places like here in Mississippi, the solar eclipse, the moon only blocked out part of the sun's light, not the complete sun's light. So this time we're gonna look at another eclipse, um, not the solar eclipse. We still have the sun, the earth, and the moon. Um, yes, I'm facing the other direction this time because I need to make sure that uh, the moon gets put in a shadow. And the only way I can do that is to be able to face the moon. So as the moon revolves around the earth, AKA my head, when the earth, my head, blocks all of the light from the sun, that is a lunar eclipse. I'm, the earth is not letting any of the light get to the moon, and so that's a lunar eclipse. So for a lunar eclipse, the order is sun, earth, moon, and you need to draw and label that in your science notebook as well. So one way to remember a solar eclipse is smart Susie makes eggs. Solar, sun, moon, earth. A solar eclipse has the sun, moon, earth in that order. One way to remember a lunar eclipse is lazy Susie eats McDonald's. Lunar equals sun, earth, moon in that order. A lunar eclipse is the sun, the earth, then the moon.